Good evening, YouTubers. Welcome back in to another edition of Astros Recap. David Artis here, Sunday night, back at the radio station. It is 6.06 p.m., July 30th, 2023. So any any background noise you might hear will be what's playing on the radio. Obviously, my schedule's a little different these days, working basically seven days a week here, so... um, a lot of Sundays will be my time to actually, well, be the time I have to do the podcast. So going forward, at least for the next few weeks, that will sort of be the routine. Uh, and the Astros play tomorrow, obviously, so it makes, you know, yeah, Sunday is better to do it and get it out there. So a lot of things to talk about. Again, I have to do the news at 630, so I got 23-ish minutes to get this done here. Should be more than enough time. Before I actually break down the games here in a second, uh, the trade deadline, obviously, on, on uh, Tuesday. I'm actually going to sort of start in in the podcast because there's a lot to talk about in terms of the trade deadline. Uh, but I want to give you a quick update on... So, I, my plan, which I <laughs> just not thought of this. I actually do this every year where I actually get on after the deadline ends, which will be Tuesday night. And I usually talk about what's going down, mainly the Astro side of things, because they've been heavily involved uh, the last few years, adding players to make the team better. So, you know, all the bullpen acquisitions back in 2021 last year, getting Mancini, Vasquez, and Will Smith there. And their three deals were done before, you know, right at the deadline, basically. So, but uh, the biggest deal, which was actually... Yesterday, to this point, the Rangers are all in as they traded um, for uh, Max Scherzer. So that's been the sort of the big deal. There's been other minor deals. They also acquired Jordan Montgomery today. So the Cardinals are sellers. Obviously, the White Sox. Well, I didn't brought that up yet, but uh, the first move. Yeah, the big talk actually the going uh, through the weekend. Um, Really before the weekend, early early this past week was the Otani uh, news, or not real news, but uh, the Otani situation. Did the Angels trade him? Did they keep him? What are they going to do with Otani? Uh, and that sort of been put, put to bed that they're not trading him. And yeah, they're actually in go for it mode as they acquired Lucas Giolito and a reliever from the White Sox. So they're 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 going for it. They're not trading Otani, and they're going to try to make a push here to the playoffs so I'm kind of actually glad that that's sort of put to bed so we can stop talking about Otani um, but again he's a great player so obviously a guy that can hit and pitch it'll be an interesting off season um, to see who bids the highest to get Otani anyway um, so yeah that was sort of the first real move was the Giolito deal which was a guy that the Astros actually would be Heavily involved in trying to get, but he went to the Angels. Um, the Astros did acquire Kendall Graveman. That was on Friday, so we remember remember Kendall Graveman from uh, 2021. He was sort of the big uh, acquisition pitcher wise, pitching wise, uh, bullpen uh, wasn't super great for us. He was wasn't bad, but wasn't as dominant as he was with the Mariners before being traded over as his numbers were just insanely good. Of course, come postseason, him, like everybody else in the bullpen, really stepped up, did a good job. Uh, and that's what you get these players for, is for your, not only your postseason push, but if you get there, to perform well in the postseason. So they added to the bullpen, which I think they needed to. It wasn't the priority. Priority is still starting pitching. And we're going to talk about, I mean, things really haven't changed starting-wise. We'll talk about it here in just a few minutes. But they need a starter. And Dana Brown today came out publicly and said, listen, that's not our priority. In fact, they're looking more at another bullpen arm, I think, more than anything else, which doesn't really make sense to me. But we'll see how things pan out. I, I, do I trust Dana Brown with that? I don't know. But we'll, we'll wait and see. But, yeah, they need a starting pitcher. And the other moves today that were made, um, talked about Montgomery going to Texas, so they added two, two starters to their staff. And also, um, Jordan Hicks of the Cardinals got traded to Toronto as their closer, Jordan Romano, just won the IL. So, 
those are the big moves to this point. Might be missing one here. There, there's some. I the uh, like Dodgers got Kike Hernandez back. That was earlier in the uh, week. It's another deal. I'm not going to break them all down. The big ones are the important ones to get, and so far the only big one is Max Scherzer. So, but the Astros acquired their reliever. Um, he actually pitched today um, in a game that really was out of hand. So, a disappointing end of the week. I mean, Tampa Bay coming to town, team that you, know, you look at the record, they're 64 and 44. We're actually 62 and 40. Well, old was they think? 62, <laughs> 62 and 43 coming in. They're now 64 and 44 as they won two of three. But Tampa Bay had the worst record in all of baseball in the month of July. So that's a very disappointing, underwhelming series for the Astros. And today it was just disastrous. One thing I really haven't brought up on the podcast all year is the, their, their defense this year has been borderline atrocious. I mean, they lead the league, and their errors they, they, they commit lead to runs, unearned runs. I think they lead the league in unearned runs this year. That's one thing I really, really brought up because I usually blame the offense, or, well, it's usually the offense. I, it's what I usually blame, but, you know. Anyway, yeah, we actually took two or three against Texas. We had a chance to sweep, so it's a little disappointing end of the series there, but I – couldn't be mad winning the first two one-run games, close, hard-fought, questionable um, calls, home plate, uh, scoring runs, a uh, few uh, reviewed calls at home plate, but the Astros benefited. I don't think they got away with anything. I think the calls were understandably made, uh, but they won the first two, and then they got sort of sel- uh, shellacked in game three. Uh, disappointing, because, I mean, they... they Win the first two games, divisions cut to one, one game back, basically. And then in game three, they even get off to a good start. Bregman hits a big three-run home run to start off the game in the first. And then Fromber sort of unraveled along with Seth Martinez, and the Astros ended up getting uh, pretty much crushed in that game. Also a uh, little scuffle as it hit Alvarez on his first game back, sort of in the upper back area, which wasn't intentional, uh, but it still happened. The Astros retaliated, hit Marcus Simeon. Simeon gets up his next plate appearance, hits a home run, sort of uh, chirping at Valdez around the bases. Maldi intervened a little bit, had uh, some things to say back, and then a little... I wasn't much of anything, really, to be quite honest. Nothing really happened. Um, after Adolis Garcia hit a grand slam later in that game, uh, Simeon sort of did a little hop on home plate, which Maldonado didn't take kind to. That was a little childish, if you ask me. I mean, he already got his retribution after he hit the home run, and he chirped at Valdez. Like, that was his yeah, point in time to, you know. But the little hop on home plate is actually probably what bothered me the most. But they ended up throwing out Marcus Simeon and Martin Maldonado, but other than that, there wasn't really much to it. Um, we'll see they, got, they play them once more in, in Arlington uh, later. I, I have the schedule over here. I'm trying to look. I think it's in like September, early September after they play New York, the Yankees at home. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, not much there. Uh, the first two games, the questionable, you know, the Astros... See, I'm going to scroll back here. Give me one second on this stupid phone. <laughs> I don't blame the phone. I blame the app here. But, yeah, crazy 10-9 to game in the first game there. I'm trying to think how things set up. I mean, the Astros, McCormick had the huge 6-RBI game. Big 3-run home run in the 7th after being down 3. Off a roll to Chapman. That was sort of the big hit as things are starting to come back to me. <laughs> but yeah, it was a big offensive outburst. Ten to nine after that, I think twelve to eleven game. It's a lot of offense uh, with the Astros and the Rangers there for well back to back games, even though they were about a month apart. So, but yeah, good to be on the winning side. Obviously, the Kyle Tucker, um, as I think it was, uh, yeah, I think it was um, 
Gunnar Diaz hit the base hit in the right field in the ninth, and Tucker came around to score the winning run, walk off single. But um, yeah, there was a questionable whether he uh, touched home plate with his foot as he came across, which was questionable. Anyway, he was called safe. They challenged it. There wasn't enough evidence to overturn it. So, yeah, we won. It's kind of interesting when the Astros play the Rangers. I like to listen to both broadcasts just to see the different perspectives and to see how homerish the the Rangers announcers are. Dave Raymond and, like, C.J. Nikowski. <laughs> it's, just, it's entertaining for me a little bit. So I like to get both perspectives. So that's kind of why there was some question there. And then... I mean, there was another play at home plate. Um, this was the Rangers, though. It was different. The Rangers, I uh, don't remember exactly what it was coming in, sliding. Rizzo called him safe. They reviewed it and then overturned that call, called him out. So the Rangers got the uh, bad, uh, uh, didn't get the benefit of the decision on either one of those cases. That was what I was mentioning earlier. But the Astros win those both one-run games. Uh, 10 to 9, 4 to 3. Just talked about Wednesday's game, but 13 to 5 as things unraveled for Valdez, who has not been good. Uh, it's important to point out Valdez has not been good. Uh, three and two thirds, eight hits, six earned runs. And yeah, Martinez comes in, pitches an inning. He gives up seven earned runs. That was really all of it when it came to the runs. Six and seven. As the, uh, yeah, I mean, the, the Rangers put up four in the third and seven in the fifth, which really opened it up. And at that point, down 10 runs didn't really make a difference. Off day Thursday. And then this weekend, the Astros lose the opener. Uh, Javier again. Actually, wasn't bad. I mean, he gave it the three run home run in the first inning there, but he bounced back and got through six more innings or five more innings. It was a quality start, so not terrible, but still. Wasn't a good start for him. Strikeout numbers were up. That's a big thing for Javier. I think he had nine strikeouts, walked two. But, yeah, the first thing he got to him, that was sort of the bad part. So, And then, yeah, Presley gave up the run after the Astros tied it at three, and it stayed that way for four innings. But the Astros give up the run in the ninth, and they lose that game. Uh, Saturday was a barrage, 17 runnings, 17 runs for the Astros. They won that 17 to four. Hunter Brown was pretty good, um, but again, you got 17 runs as the Astros' offense just went berserk. Uh, but Hunter Brown, pretty good. ERA still over four for him, but six innings, two earned runs, struck out four, walked two. I mean, you know. And then today, we sort of mentioned the um, defensive issues. Only one error, but, I, I mean, there were a lot of plays that should have been made. I mean, the, the one big error in the first inning with the Brayu, with the bases loaded and one out, basically had a tailor-made double play possibly, but he botched at first base. They got no outs. Then they actually get the second out on a pop-up and then a three-run bases clearing double opened it up early so three and three weeks not that um, not that impressive I'm actually going to do something real quick here because I got to find the remote here it is the Rangers games is going on right now and there's I guess it's over okay never mind just ended Rangers just got swept by San Diego so after all of that, the Astros actually still gain a game this week, and they're only one game back. One game. But yeah, Rangers did make the move, so good for them in that regard. But we'll wait and see. They just got swept by San Diego. San Diego now might look at this as like, listen, we got, you know, San Diego might not be interested in trading because they were sort of on the seller side of things, but, you know. Uh, I mean, San Diego, I look at them, they'll be five back at the third wild card, but still chasing Chicago. Chicago's better than, wow, they might not be sellers with Bellinger and Stroman. They're 53 and 52, three and a half games back. Arizona, Philly, a lot of teams in the mix there, I feel like. Um, yeah, 
a lot of teams in the mix for the national uh, National League side of things in terms of the wild card. So, anyway, um, yeah, pitching is still not very good. Uh, Belak got tagged with a loss today, although a lot of his runs were unearned as I look at the box here. I think he gave up six runs. Let me check this, make sure I'm right. Yeah, six runs, three of them were unearned. So three were earned. Five innings, 3.74 ERA. I mean, I'm not super upset with Belak. I mean, he's not the guy they expect to... I mean, he's not a guy that you'd expect to be in your rotation, basically. He's just here because of the injuries and things. Urquidy should be back this week, actually. Pitching Friday or Saturday. I think he started today. I think it's fourth start in Sugarland, but he's through 70-something pitches, so he should be back and ready to go as the Astros will probably go six-man rotation. But Valdez and Javier, guys that still haven't really shown us anything since the All-Star break to say that they've been good. I mean, if you want to give you know Javier some credit, you could. But Valdez deserves none. He's been terrible his last three starts. Hunter Brown was better, but still needs to get better and continue to pitch at least as well as he did on Saturday. Um, you know, like I said, we'll get Ur Urquidy back. Who else is in this rotation I'm leaving out right now? can't believe I can't think of this. I just said Javier. I said Valdez. I said Hunter Brown. b lag pitch today. I'm missing one guy, aren't I? I'm missing one guy. I think. It was... Um, J.P. France. He's the best pitch in the rotation at this point. So J.P. France, yeah. He's the one guy that's actually been good. ERA at 2.87, lowest. Uh, Win-loss uh, win loss record's a little bit better. 6-3. and three. He was like 2-3 and three at one point. So, But he's been the best pitch on the team, which is crazy because he's a rookie, and he's only pitched in about 15 games, 15 starts this year. But that's the reality of the situation. I don't know what Dana Brown sees in this rotation that makes him think. I mean, getting Urquidy back, yes, would help. I mean, eat up some innings. Hopefully, you know, I've, I've liked Urquidy, you know. Uh, but we'll see. But they they need somebody. Um, you know, Justin Verlander's been the name that's been floated out. Now, the Astros just don't have anything to offer to a lot of teams because that, that's what's hard. If you want to make a big deal like that, it's very hard to do when you don't have prospects and talent available. And the Astros don't have it. So that's what makes Dana, uh, Dana Brown's job very extremely hard to get a guy like that. But, yeah, I mean, unless you're giving up some major league talent, there's nothing in the farm other than Drew Gilbert. There's one other guy. Can't pronounce his name really. Spencer starts with an A last name, but they really don't have a lot other than those two guys, and they don't want to give away Gilbert because he's an outfielder. And with Tucker not signed, that might be a guy. Well, I think he'll be a guy they are going to have to use, especially if they can't sign Kyle Tucker. So, but yeah, a lot going on out there in the newsroom. So anyway. But, yeah, so I look at the standings here as I just updated. Astros still one game back, 59-47. Three and three a week, not great, but the Rangers are struggling. So we're one game back still. Wild card, we're tied with Toronto for the second wild card spot. As Toronto also lost today. Boston sticks at two and a half back. Is Boston still playing? I need to go back ahead here. Because there was another game still in action. Yankees and Orioles just started the night game. Angels. What did Boston? I think Boston lost, but I don't know. Let's see here. Yeah, they lost the Giants, which helped. So the Astros sit. You know, two and a half games up in the wild card standings. But the goal is obviously the division. I mean, Scherzer gets traded. He's been the big name, but he hasn't been good this year. I mean, the year is at 4.01. Of course, the uh, Mets are going to eat a big chunk of that salary. 
and the Rangers only gave up one of their top prospects. So, um, but yeah, the Astros just don't have a lot in terms of assets to give to teams to get big deals done. But Dana Brown's got to make something else happen here, and he's got about 48 hours to do it, so a little less than 48 hours. So it'll be very interesting. I'm, like, on Twitter watch, I feel like. Like, I'm going uh, refreshing that every few hours to see anything. You know, you get a lot of reports of things that are close to done. or Like, we got news that the Astros tried with Verlander earlier today. They were so far apart, and now the Mets even said they plan on keeping them. So that could be done, but that's the big name right now. That's most talked about is Verlander. And there's some other guys as well around there. I don't know what the Cubs. The Cubs might uh, end up not trading, might end up buying. And the Padres could do the same. So, you know. But they do need a starter. I don't know what Dana Brown sees in the rotation that makes him feel good about, you know, the playoffs with the rotation we got. Now, if you, you, you want Valdez to return to A status, you want Javier uh, to be a solid two. J.P. France has been great. Hopefully, Arquiti can work him way somewhere in the middle there. But that's all best-case scenario. And there's nothing we've seen at um, Javier and Valdez of late that show us that they're, you know, maybe maybe uh, Javier a little bit, but nothing on Valdez's side that, that, that tells me he's better or is getting better. He was so good, it felt like, for the first, you know, up to the halfway point. And then since the All-Star break, the three starts, he's been terrible at every single one. So, anyway, i got to wrap things up here. Um, I will try to talk to you Tuesday night after the Astros game because the trade deadline. Now, I worked till 6 that day or something like that. Uh, but Tuesday night, the deadline will be over. And that's when I want to break things down. That's been – I've done that the last number of years, so – but I want to sort of be able to do that. So Tuesday night will be probably back at my house. Will probably be what we uh, try to do. Um, so that will be the plan. Um, hopefully the Astros can make a splash. I would take another reliever because you can't have too many of those. But I think the priority still needs to be starter. He's also Dana Brown's also talked about a uh, bat. So we'll see. You know. But Brantley and Altuve are back in the lineup. Um, that should help, obviously. Brantley is slowly ramping up, but I can't trust anything there until he's actually healthy and ready to be activated. That's when I believe Brantley's back on this team. And our kitty should be back pitching Friday or Saturday. So we are getting better health-wise. But, um, yeah, trade deadline is a big thing. And the Rangers are adding to their team starting rotation-wise. Uh, I don't think the Astros should overreact to it, but I still think that another move, at least one more, needs to be made. So, And it'll be interesting. Uh, this is always the fun, fun, very fun time of the year, deadline, uh, especially with the Astros, with how competitive they've been the last six, seven years making deals. So, but yeah, i got to wrap things up there, and we'll talk to you probably we're looking at Tuesday night. We'll see you then.